Ballparks of Major League Baseball are truly unique. In fact, they used to be even more unique than they are today, with bizarre walls, structures, home run territories, foul territories, and more. In fact, they even used to allow fans on the field. And in this video, we'll go through a few of them. These are the bizarre features of past ballparks. First, we're going to start off with the really tall walls and fences of Major League Baseball. Today, Fenway Park's Green Monster really is the only giant wall remaining in Major League Baseball. There's a few that are still fairly high, but there were quite a few more in the past. Since Philadelphia's Baker Bowl had its home run wall only 279 feet away from home plate, they had to compensate by building a 40-foot wall with an additional 20-foot fence on top of it, meaning in total, the wall with the fence was 60 feet high. This issue would similarly occur at Cleveland's League Park, with its distance in right field only being 12 feet further back. In League Park's case, more of a fence was built instead of a wall, and it was about the same height. In fact, today, a modern replica still exists, so one can still take in and see what a fence like this actually looked like in person. There were also others, such as Griffith Stadium. They had a 30-foot one, which actually had to be angled inward due to the fact that property could not be acquired out in the outfield. Next, we have the super deep outfields. Some of the ballparks of the past really put today's ballparks to shame when it comes to distance to get a home run, if at all. While some ballparks had to have tall walls to squeeze onto a city block, some just really went all out with the space of the field. While many associate New York's polo grounds with having one of the deepest outfields in MLB history at 505 feet at its furthest point, a distance that is quite notable and historic for a ballpark, there was one ballpark that beat polo grounds measurement by over 100 feet. Boston's Huntington Avenue grounds, which was Boston's ballpark before Fenway, had an outfield wall that was 635 feet away from home plate at one point. To put that into perspective, the longest home run ever was 575 feet, so a home run would never have cleared this wall in all of Major League history. Next we have dead zones. So in multi-purpose stadiums, the configuration would never be perfect, and you would just have these vast areas of dead space that would have to be walled off or not be able to be seated because there would be no views. And this would be heavily notable and noticeable in stadiums such as Cleveland Stadium and Exhibition Stadium. Both just really went too far back for baseball, and things like this would even carry over in more modern stadiums like the Metrodome where seats would just basically have to be curtained off. Another feature that's pretty much been lost to history are the free seating and views from outside of stadiums. Now technically they weren't always free as people on the outside would charge for access to viewing points at times, but technically whoever controlled the property had free access to viewing games. This was basically something that could happen in the age of ballparks being more integrated with the neighborhood they were in instead of a downtown area. It could also be more easily achieved due to the fact that the ballparks were just much smaller in capacity way back and were much lower off the ground, especially since there weren't multiple levels of luxury seating to make the ballparks even taller. Today this technically still exists at Wrigley Field with the Wrigley rooftops, however, it's regulated in part by the team, they get a cut. It used to be a private enterprise, but there were issues, so not exactly the same as before. And finally, we just have some miscellaneous ones, such as the Tiger Stadium home run overhang. Basically, this overhang could catch a ball and make it a home run, even if it didn't quite have the distance to be a home run if it wasn't there. Technically, this still exists in limited instances, like at Arizona's Chase Field, but not quite to the same extent that this was. You also had on-field flagpoles at stadiums such as Tiger Stadium and Forbes Field. There were also indentations, meaning areas that would go farther back than the rest of the outfield wall, like that of the Polo Grounds, or that of Baker Bowl, which had a really strange one right down the center. 
The triangle at Fenway Park would be the closest comparison to these in a modern setting. Obviously with time, ballparks would improve and many of these unusual, unique, and sometimes just frankly annoying features would be removed. Which leads us to today, where ballparks are quite a bit more standardized, however they are still quite unique from each other, despite all the changes. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.